know, you see athlete after athlete after athlete after athlete in the long jump, doing pretty much the same thing. And then you get a somersault. I had never done a somersault in my life, but athletes do dumbass things if it improves their performance. Those wise words just came from Tariki Delamere. He's talking about the running long jump. And as you take off from the ground, your body begins to forward rotate. So we as long jumpers lean, or we do a technique in the air, either the hang, the sail, the hitch kick, or somewhere in between, so that when we jump, we don't land flat on our face due to forward rotation. Well, Tariki, he's a New Zealander, and back in the 1970s, he came down to Washington State University. And in 1974, he went to a meet and said, why are we fighting rotation? Why not go with it? So he said, I'm gonna do a somersault. I'm gonna let my forward momentum carry me into a front flip while I'm jumping. And that's exactly what he did at a meet. The guy jumps almost eight meters with no spatial awareness. This was a major PR for him. Imagine if he had the control of say, a gymnast or a parkour athlete. Someone who's used to having control while flipping through the air. I mean, think about it. This could have been a major paradigm shift in how long jumps performed. But it wasn't given a chance. Track and field's governing body, IAAF, or World Athletics, they didn't want to have a bunch of kids running out there doing front flips and flipping into the sand and getting injured. And it makes sense. So the following year, 1975, they put it in the official rule books. An athlete will fail if they do a somersault. Rule number three. But I actually want to hear from you. Do you think they made the right decision banning the somersault technique? Or do you think he was onto something and he actually found a better way to long jump? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.